on that. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, that's okay. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to our class on the Roadmap to Happiness. And um, we just were getting started very informally tonight, our second class. Um, and I really wanna thank Kate for bringing up an issue that I wanna talk more about dealing with a difficult neighbor, for instance, but we all have, don't we have that person in our lives? You know, this is not unique. And yet when it's looming, it's pretty ugly. It's pretty ugly and it dominates the mind. It keeps you up at night. So one of the things I just, before we really get started is to say to Kate, this is something I learned from Lama Zopa Rinpoche day many years ago. I don't know what has happened between you and the neighbor, um, but there was, Rinpoche was visiting students in Singapore many years ago, staying with a very wealthy family. And the man was having a severe issue with the next door neighbor. And it, it started to get pretty vicious where the man, the student bought a new car and the neighbor came out and took a key and scratched the side of the car. And, but this is after a long history of disharmony between them, like different, this happened and he did this to me and then he did that to him and he back and forth. So the, the student, the man of the family was so frustrated and said to Rinpoche sitting and said, I am so angry and it's all about the neighbor's fault, it's him. The neighbor, the neighbor, the neighbor. You're right, this is how our mind solidifies, right? We, it's them, it's outside of me. I don't have any responsibility. So he asked Rinpoche for advice after telling the story that we're also very invested in the story. We're gonna do a meditation in a moment about that. And this is Rinpoche's advice, okay? And I actually practiced this on a lesser scale with a nun um, long, long ago when I was before based in California that I didn't get on with. Believe it or not, yes, sometimes monastics don't get on, but it was fascinating. So Rinpoche told the student, um, what you need to do is to, um, he said, what does the man like to do for fun? It ended up he golfed, like to golf. So Rinpoche advised the student, can you go out and buy very, very nice golf balls, a box as a gift, and you wrap it up nicely and you offer that to him and tell him that you are sorry for any disturbance you've ever caused him. Can you imagine? How's that gonna work, Kate, with your neighbor? Okay, even if you've been wronged, right? So the student was, got angrier <laughs> from the advice, didn't wanna hear it and talked to his wife, I'm not doing that. I'm not like, it went on for like a week or two. Rim, she was there for, but somehow two weeks later, fortunately, out of his anger and a lot of pain for himself, anguish at his family, like his family was just like, let it go, he couldn't. So somehow through persuasion from his wife and Rinpoche, and then he, he did go out and buy a very nice box of gold golf balls, whatever it was, gold covered, nice box. And sincerely, Rinpoche said it has to be sincere. And he knocked on the door and offered and said that to him, that he apologized for any upset he's ever caused him, whatever happened, that whether, and Rinpoche was also saying, you know, this life, or past lives. Like there's things we say, I didn't do anything in this life. The karma is there, the seed is in your mind. So he did this offering, okay? And that, that was it. The neighbor was incredibly receptive. The neighbor apologized back. The neighbor said how sorry he was about the car. He paid and took care of fixing the car. And that was the end of the dispute. So my own little level of with this nun, when I met her years ago, I, she moved to this area. I was excited to meet her. I'd heard about her. We had some things in common and I was like, great. As soon as I met her, she hated me. <laughs> it was just because I don't know what, like she just, there was, so it's karma. Sometimes you remember she, one time he said to me something in relation to teacher with his attendant, Roger, and Rinpoche said, I said to Rinpoche at one point, but Roger wasn't even there. He wasn't involved. He wasn't even there. 
And Rishi says, just karma, just karma. So we don't dismiss responsibility because of karma. We take more responsibility. So I realized it's in my mind with this nun and I don't want to die with this. Something got caused. Something's in my mind that I caused for her not to like me, to be this kind of separate. So I got her a gift. You know, I gave her some incense or something, bought very genuinely, really wanted to offer, made it very nice. And at the right moment, I found an opportunity. And I said, again, whatever I have done, I'm so sorry. And I really meant it, that whatever I've disturbed your mind, I really, and I offered her this gift. And she said some really harsh things back to me. And I just, and I, I just said, I'm so, and I just said, I'm sorry. And just accepted, let it go. You know, and even we were on a big retreat at the center. And so by that evening, and I just let it go. I didn't have, you can't have expectation but you are changing the karma just by doing it, gen genuinely doing it. You are changing something in your mind, but I had to let go of the expectation that I would see the change in my lifetime. She would change and like me. You know, I really had to let that go. I just went, I'm just gonna clear this car. I just wanna offer. So I did, and by that evening, she was able to give me a little incense thing and she had written on it, on the box, a very nice little prayer. It was so positive that, and I just accepted it very nicely, humbly. Thank you so much. And since then, this was years ago, but every month, or we were still in this area for a while together, every month or so, things got better, better, better. We ended up overseas at one point sharing a room. Um, I was cheering her up. She was very depressed. She was laughing. And different times I've interacted now. And, and now I'd say we're pretty decent friends pretty decent friends you know, she lives overseas but like it is possible anything is possible I'm not any great holy being but the thing is you have to learn humility which is one of our eight pillars of joy we're going to talk about in these sessions letting go the solidity of my ego and I think I'm right just creates a painful knot at the center of your core please check is it worth hanging out with that and ruminating? Rumination, check your rumination. The ruminating mind lingers in the past stories. You're not present with the ruminating mind. I'm reviewing what happened, what they did to me, what she said, and I'm going over and over and I'm solidifying that track of negativity often like that. We don't often ruminate over the positive, you know? I mean, we have nostalgic longing, I'll call it on the positive, like, oh, that was such a great day. And, you know, but the negative, we really ruminate through and creating this deep trench, as I've mentioned. But honestly, with this nun, I thought, well, this is not gonna, and people even said, well, she's disturbed and she, and I'm like, I can't make only, I'm involved in this, I'm part of this. You know, I wasn't, couldn't think of anything in this life, but something was in my mind that caused this disharmony. And our job on this planet, please, right now, is to eradicate, and I'll just say on this level, minimize, diminish, purify the disharmony. So we have to start with our own minds. Yeah. So Kate, can you think of a gift? Should we brainstorm later about a gift? I, cert I certainly hear what it is that you're saying, and I will think about that. I, I don't have the same kind of interactions. I won't go into the details, but I can just say it's quite baffling because I helped her quite a lot already. And so the aggressive behavior that's angered me is coming after I helped her. So it's a really, I anyway, I, without getting into details, it felt like the best thing I can do is never respond to her aggression. And I don't know if that's the sole answer. I do think maybe there's more. So I'll, I'll have to think about it. We'll and if you can think it, and we can talk about it specifically more privately if you want, but we sure. can think about it because when you hear about get her a gift and you know, you go, what? I mean, this person in Singapore took them a while to like, it, you know, it's not our normal way of doing, but this is the way it works. And I've seen it work with other people too. It goes against the whole thing. And what happens sometimes I've noticed this is I've got 
other, you have other influences around you, family and friends that may not be as grounded in the Dharma. And they'll say, you know, you need to tell her, you need to get them back. You need to do, and, and you have to really think about, I, I have a thing of what would Rinpoche say? What would Rinpoche say? What would Rinpoche do? You know, I'd, I'd rather reach for that than, and to think, what would, how would Rinpoche respond to this? I've seen Rinpoche in various situations. What would His Holiness, the Dalai Lama say? What would Archbishop Desmond Tutu say? Because that's the book we're focused on, the two of them. How would they respond? And can I choose kindness? And it's hard, it's hard. So we can talk about that more as well. So what I'd like you to do right now let me just play a little video for you. I'm going to share my screen just to get us in the mood. Okay. I hope I can share this. Also. I will see. You ever wondered what actors and actresses do when they have to get in shape really fast for a movie? Because I can promise you. Okay. Can you see that? Can you see this? Everybody seeks okay. happiness. Yeah. Joy for play it back. But from everybody seeks happiness, joyfulness. But from outside, from money, from power, from material, from big car, from big house, the ultimate source of happiness is within ourselves. Love, kindness, not mission, not technology, not money, not power. We find a deep deep dissatisfaction in out-and-out out materialism because we are made for something greater than this. We are meant for the, for the infinite. Share the joy. Are you in? Okay, welcome back. I just said it's nice to bring little snippets from some meetings they had and there's some videos about based on the book. So what I'd like to do now is find your way into a comfortable position. We'll do a short meditation. Finding that space for your spine. And I see, thank you for joining Lamo and again, uh, Lamo in Florida, um, dear one, has just lost her mom, and um, I've been saying prayers for, for her, so it's very nice to see you here, and I miss seeing you anyway, so it's great to see you. Longtime practitioner. Find that comfortable space for your body, having the spine as extended as possible can lightly close your eyes. Begin to deepen your respiration. And as you do that, I want you to just observe how your mind is right now. How are you feeling? And as you do, let go of the distractions of the day and all the many thoughts, concerns. And you're just observing as you inhale some space, some calm to that inner experience. As you exhale, something that is not really necessary for you right now.
and you're just watching your mind from a detached way without judgment, without that's a good thought, that's not a good thought, I should be thinking this, just observing. And finally, slowly letting the thoughts float away like bubbles. As you settle your mind on the breath, normal breath, natural breath. And how's the posture of your mind right now? So as again, as I mentioned last week, in setting a positive motivation, we're able to enhance a good feeling we're having, the spaciousness, the clarity. And we can also rebalance a mind that is not feeling spacious and clear. So thinking about a Mahayana motivation, where we are very focused on benefiting all living beings, we all know right now there's a tremendous amount of beings that need help. In our current state, a lot of us are limited. If we can traverse a long and authentic path like this one to Buddhahood, we are unlimited then in how we can benefit all beings. If that's something you're interested in, feel free to include that notion in your motivation, taking time right now. This is you directing your awareness. You're taking control of your mind and sending it in a certain direction with this motivation. Take a moment and set that positive motivation. We have many obstacles to joy in our lives, many obstacles. Let's explore. I'd like you right now to reflect on a topic or an experience that is troubling you. Your thoughts and feelings as they arise And let me know if I'm breaking up. My internet thing says it's unstable. So let me know if you lose me. Just notice your thoughts and feelings as they arise. And the first thing is you notice, and you may have some very strong negative thoughts that arise. Panic 
fear, anger, utter frustration or despair, over attachment, utter confusion. We know these different experiences. Just want you to notice now, observe. Can you recognize every thought experience that's arising right now is temporary? Every thought experience is temporary. Can I just watch them arising like bubbles on that surface of the lake without judging or identifying, overly identifying with them? Just observe. And I want you to ask yourself now, regarding the thoughts and feelings that are arising, you notice one thought? Ask yourself, is this thought true? What about the next thought? And ask yourself about a certain thought. Does it help the situation? Explore what is or what was your expectation? Can I release it and accept what is or how others are rather than how I think they should be? Can I acknowledge my part in a conflict?
Now, here are two of the keys that can help lift us up, removing the obstacle to joy. Ask yourself, please, with the situation you're thinking about, is there something, ask yourself, is there something I can learn from this experience? Is there something I can learn from this experience? And here's the second part of the key. How can I use this experience to help others? How can I use this experience to help others? Please relax and slowly when you're ready, please open your eyes. If it's possible again for um, people to be on camera and just recalling as if we're in a gompa together, um, it's really helpful if that's possible for you. So last week we had some, thank you so much. We had those exercises. We were talking a little bit in the beginning uh, just to review of working with also some self-compassion techniques. So when an obstacle to joy comes into your mind, could be anything, but we have names for them, like some of the ones I mentioned, fear, anxiety, depression, jealousy, control issues, anger, overattachment. You, you get the picture. These are all the obstacles to joy. So what I was saying is give yourself a break with mindfulness, with mindfulness, there were three approaches. With mindfulness, considering shared humanity, the second, and with loving kindness, loving kindness. So just considering if it was mindfulness, here's a moment of fear, or I'm noticing how uncomfortable I am right now, and I'm just going to hang there with it, because as we know, Life on the planet in samsara, I'm sorry, is uncomfortable. And in addition, we're experiencing a pretty uncomfortable time on the planet overall. So it happens. So instead of running and escaping and numbing and folding in on yourself or lashing out at someone, can I just be there with my discomfort? Because if I can, just hold it there, feel it. I know it's not pleasant, but what's going on? And first, just with the mindfulness of it. But when I get to shared humanity, I realize there's a lot of other people that feel this way. So first, you're just being mindful of what's arising. I'm angry at my neighbor. Well, there's anger. So rather than I'm an angry person, it's just there's a lot of anger in my mind right now. 
And here's the other thing, and please, is this your experience of your mind? Your mind changes all day long, doesn't it? Your mind is different throughout the day. I had some obstacles this morning from some emails I got about the work I'm doing. And I'll put it this way. They weren't the emails I was expecting to get today. So you wake up and everything's fine. And then you get a couple of emails that don't quite light you up. Right? But again, remember email. It's a strange kind of way of communicating. You can't see the person's expression. You can't kind of feel them that you know they care about you. And they're, it's, 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 so you can misinterpret easily. So here it is with this exercise we just did. What's the story my mind's telling me? Is it accurate? Is it accurate? You have to work with it. You can't just solidify the story. She's a jerk. This guy's a jerk. Why are they doing this? I'm like this. I'm, that, that's simply not true. If, I'm, if I add the fluidity and allow that flexibility of my mind, okay, people who are flexible are happier generally than rigid people. I think you, you know that. People who are more flexible. So I kind of went, oh, I don't like that email. And I, I just hung there with my dis discomfort. Well, that's not, that doesn't make me feel good. Okay, well, yeah, some days it's like that. But again, from the exercise we just did, the mind's changing all the time. So that thought I'm having, that experience of discomfort, okay, it's not, gonna, it's not always gonna be there because it wasn't there yesterday. So if I wanna hang on to it and make it more solid and it's always like this, but that's not true. That's not true, even with people with chronic depression. It's not true like that. There was a time before the first moment of depression. I often ask them to remember that time. Yeah. So the next thing is I apply some of that. So you stay first the mindfulness, and then here's shared humanity. You might say, well, COVID's rising. I'm isolated. I can't see my friends. I can't do this. I wanted to do that. Or, or I got this email, and it upset me. You know, many people have that experience and they don't have the Dharma to work with it to say, well, my mind's is changing thoughts. I have a participation in this, responsibility in this. I have a part. In, okay. So with shared humanity, I'm able to move into, there's so many other people on the planet experiencing this. The same thing. I'm not alone not alone. And in the work with the center, there's a group of people that really care about this center. I am one of them. I'm one of them. Well, that's exciting. I'm not doing this by myself. Far from it. I couldn't. I know there's other people. I know there's people that, I, and I'll venture to say, because they've had a deeper investment, that may care about this center more than I do. And I care a lot about this center. Okay. So I, I trust that. That's my share. We're in this together common humanity. And then the last part is you may need a little bit more support right now. At one point, I found myself sitting in front of the computer, like with my hand on my heart, just, just kind of needed that. Just kind of needed that. Or at some point, I was going to have a shower, you know, so it was kind of like, you know what, you read all this, you did this, go take a shower. Just wash it off. Wash off any negative feelings. Use, use daily life activities like that. Why not? I came out of the shower. I felt different. Wasn't any big deal. Just kind of like, let, you can do little purification practices in the shower. Perfect time for Vajrasattva. I'm not kidding. Lama Zopram, she recommends that. You got the water coming down anyway. Use it. Wash it out. Oh, I had these negative thoughts. Oh, I thought they were solid. Oh, my mind's always like that. Oh, these people are against me. It's not true. So far from the truth. So, but you know, I just need something else to help me. Took, I was going to take a shower, take a shower, let it pour down the drain. Came out, I was like, okay. Now I feel differently. Now I feel differently. And some of the, the input I might've gotten from the email, at first I didn't like it, but I went, well, you know what? Do the work, do this email. It was going to take you a lot of time. I did it. It shared this information and, and I sent it out to these people. And by the time... I got back and got, everybody's like, wow, that was really helpful. Great. Thanks so much. I know it took, it must've taken you a lot of time to do that. 
Okay, that's great, thank you. So there's a fluidity if you want to allow that fluidity to take course and take shape in your life. But again, that's just using mindfulness, shared humanity, loving kindness. You know, and I might have even with the loving kindness been like this morning, what, what do I need right now to kind of, you know, part of it was I was going to have the shower and I'm just really wanted a good cup of coffee. And I went and made myself a good cup of coffee and um, just, and enjoyed it and, and drank it really sipping, like enjoying, not doing it with something else. And just, this is what I needed right now. A little calm time. Everything's okay. And then some buoyancy can come. And I'm not holding on to the thought so much, not solidifying my stories. My stories aren't accurate until, unless I have a direct perception of emptiness. Okay. So let me go into some notes I have, the book of joy. I just want to orient you into, we're going to move moving into some of the eight pillars and we're going to also have a little breakout session with you is um, let's see where was my thing here so here we go is what most people have found these are scientists sociologists psychologists therapists everybody and some of you've heard me talk about this before is what people have said is there's three factors some people keep coming back to, they keep basically mentioning the same things, okay, that seem to have the greatest influence on increasing our happiness. Okay. Greatest influence on increasing our happiness, okay? And what would you just say thinking about it? What would you say are some of the factors that would help you, would have this very positive influence on making us happier, making us feel more joy? Any thoughts? Connection with other human beings. Sorry? Connection with other human beings. Connection with other human beings. Great. Mm -hmm. I think Connection with other human beings. Yep. What else? Thank you. Hi, Venerable. It's Sheil. Hi, Sheil. Are Hi. you there? I'm, I'm here. I'm, yeah, I'm going to put my camera on in just a minute. <laughs> um, I think just doing acts of kindness for others I found that to spark a lot of joy in me um there's a lady in my building who I really feel a lot of compassion for and I find that when I think of her and I am of service to her I feel really good like like if I'm going to like the grocery store and I think of her and I buy things for her there's such a joy that comes into my mind and I don't and I drop it off at her door and I knock on the door and I don't want her to say thank you to me or anything but I find I've chosen somebody that I can always sort of if I'm not if I want to spark joy immediately I just go out and sort of service, like do a be a Great. service call and I find a lot of joy in that. Super, yeah. Shale, Shale's in, you're still in Canada? Yes. Yeah, great. Shale's from Canada. It must be cold up there. It is. <laughs> yes, doing something for others. I'm going to label that also gratitude. Uh, sorry, generosity. Generosity. Okay, absolutely. So we've got connection with others, generosity. Jeff, Jeff from Chicago. <laughs> Um, laughter, I was thinking, I mean, it, that makes yeah. me, sometimes great I just have to laugh. <laughs> yeah, you have to laugh sometimes. I think having that sense of humor and also being able to laugh at yourself, you know, not taking yourself so seriously, inappropriate moments, not taking yourself so seriously, not taking things so personally, not taking things so personally. You know, I, I'm working with a community again, and I, I'm just amazed at how we get off on the wrong things because somebody took it personally and, I'm, and it's like no we're just trying to figure out what's going to do this and it doesn't mean you did a bad job it's not about you it's like that we want to help and what would be better to do could be this but it's not a personal thing a lot of us keep saying that to each other you know so so laughter is really important what else anything else 
maybe a balance, like a, a balance in life, work, work, happiness, study, you know, social. Sure. That's really nice. Finding a balance in life. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. This is great. And so these are from three factors that we could lump all of these into, okay, that seem to have the greatest influence from these scientists, from these sociologists that relate to everything you just said, everybody said, is here's the first one. I love this one. Reframe our situation more positively. That leads us into the first pillar of joy perspective. Okay, reframing the situation more positively. I want you to work with that this week, please. What I'd love to do in the future is I used to have a Monday night class in Santa Cruz. We met for years. We had a lot of people. We had like 60 people at one point. And, and what I did is in the middle of the week, they got, a, they got a little email from me. And I just don't have the ability right now to set that up. I could send it through the center, you know, through Sunny or something to, she's got all your emails, but to say, hello, are you reframing positively? Because it's really helpful in the middle of your week to get a little reminder to kind of go, oh, wait a minute, I forgot. Most people leave the class, put it away, forget about it all week. And then they come back Tuesday night and they go, oh yeah, what was the thing that we were talking about? So it's kind of neat. I want to eventually develop some classes where we can do that. Sunny, is that something you could do this week or is it complicated? It's not complicated, venerable. And, um, but I would ha um, have to talk to Sheila and Snay and uh, coordinate with them. Um, I think Sheila is here today, so uh, she is. Yeah. Yes, I'm so here. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And again, so what do you think, so, Sheila? Um, I'm, I'm sure we can do it. I mean, I like you say, we have everybody's email from registration, and um, if you send something to us, we'll forward okay. it to everyone else. Okay. Cool. And, and thank you, Allie? Sheila and Sunny, for hosting in Shanti Davis Center. And um, but again, Sheila and Sunny, please, and talk to Snay if I don't want to make it complicated for you guys because you're volunteering and you're doing mm -hmm. a great job. But if it's easy, why don't we try it for this class? We'll see. And if it's not, not to worry. That. I've, done, I've done that in the past to send information to um, like participants. So Super. we should be able to do that. Okay, so you'll all be getting an email from me now. So think mm -hmm. about reframing. And we're gonna talk more about that. Here's the second thing. Reframe our situation more positively. Okay, our, and here's number two, our ability to experience gratitude. Okay, and our sec and the third is our choice to be kind and generous. You know, and that's also Shield saying, I want to help this person in gratitude. But I also think what Maureen was saying about balance fits into all of these. I mean, that's about reframing. That lends balance. But think just think about this week. Please think about are you do you wake up grateful? Did you did you skip it for a couple of days? And it's a hard time right now. It's a hard time right now. And people are losing that gratitude because they're like, what do I have to be grat grateful for? Well, you know, maybe having a safe, warm bed to sleep in every night, shelter and access to a vaccine if you wanted, access to beautiful food. And maybe you're in a really cold place right now and you have heat. That's special for a lot of people. You know, there's, there's many things, but that also comes from reframing from the first step where if I'm reframing, like I can just wallow in my horror of whatever happens but boy are there people around the planet really struggling right now as you know as you know and then and then this third one is so is lovely um our choice to be kind and generous kind and generous you know i mentioned i got this email this morning and i wasn't feeling that way it wasn't that i was feeling unkind or not generous but i was really kind of sunken in on myself of like oh what now like you know, I, I'm tending to get like two really good days a week and then the other five are a mixed bag, depending on all the people that were swimming around together. They're good people. But I kind of went, all right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Choose kindness. These are friends. These are people I love. The love's always there, you know, and let me have a generous attitude about that email to see how I can really help here rather than just like, well, they can deal with it then like that and it and it's really by the afternoon transformed transformed create and, and i'll put it this way um the first comment somebody made was connecting with others that comes from the kindness and the generosity so so now i have with this person the exercise i have connection with them again where i felt disconnected this morning right 
But again, I had to look at what I was interpreting of words on the screen. So be careful when you're reading an email that like, think about the person sitting across from you, double check and go back to them if it's a work email or something like that. And, and now by the afternoon from able to choose kindness, generosity, reframing, I now have positive connection once again with them, the sender of the email like that. So, and that's what we have to do on the planet. That's our job really as Buddhists, especially. We have to keep choosing, showing up for that. Let's talk about perspective. First pillar of joy. Perspective, and I'll mention a healthy perspective. As you know, is really a foundation of joy and happiness, the healthy perspective, okay? Because again, as you know, the way you see the world is the way you experience the world. We know that, we know angry people and we know people it's always negative and that's all they see, right? We all know people like that. So think about your perspective this week as you think about those three things again, those, and I want you to try to use those things, reframing the situation to more positive, looking at what you can be grateful for and then kindness and generosity. Like, can you include those in as much as possible? Okay. So changing the way we see the world in turn changes the way we feel and, and the way we act. Okay. And because we change the way we feel and act into a positive way, okay, that actually changes the world into something more positive. I'm not just being cliched, but you are part of the world. When we were younger, some of us might have had a notion, I want to change the world for better. Well, this is how we do it. It's nothing like Mahayana Buddhism. It's extraordinary. It's an extraordinary path to change the world. You're part of the world. All I have to do is reframe my perspective into something positive. And if I'm around other people, that has an effect. As opposed to, as we know, negative people. Negative, complaining. It's always a problem. People don't want to be around them. Like that. All the positive things come from this perspective, like that. And, and again, according to Buddhism, Lama Zopar Rinpoche says this over and over and over to us, as you know. And first from the Dharmapada, with our mind, we create our own world. Lama Zopar Rinpoche's saying is everything comes from the mind. Everything comes from the mind. Think about it, please. Okay, so it's my perspective, my view. What I'm putting out there is, creates how I see things, how I see things. And His Holiness the Dalai Lama will say, from every event in your life, there are many different angles. So when you look at an event from a wider perspective, your sense of worry and anxiety can reduce and you can have greater joy. Right? We all know that. When did you, did any of you see, I wish I could think of the name of this movie. I found it fascinating. Of, it was a commercial film about, I think an assassination attempt in a maybe um, a South American country or something, I can't remember. But it, what it did is it gave each person involved, it, it, they kept repeating from their perspective. So first you got it sorted of who you thought the killer was and what their motive was. And then they would run that film, that story, and then it would stop and then it would go back into the next person's story. And then you had a whole different perspective on it. And you go, oh my God, like she was there first. And then it would run it from another person's story and another person's story. Did anybody, does anybody remember or see this? It was well worth watching of just the stories we get going and how it frames your worldview and how mistaken that worldview often is until you have a direct perception of the truth, emptiness. So interesting. Okay, so, so from Tukhtan Jimpa, who is His Holiness's, His Holiness the Dalai Lama's interpreter when His Holiness teaches in the West, he's been interpreting for some of His Holiness's teachings now, which has been brilliant, online. He explained that while changing our emotions is really hard, changing our perspective is, is much easier, is relatively easy. It's part of our mind over which we have influence. So the way you see the world, the meaning you give to what you witness changes the way you feel about it. 
And the first step, this is the first step on a spiritual and kind of neural journey, okay, that results in our practicing more equanimity, okay, almost creating a default state that's more joyful, that's more joyful. And so Jimpa says, this is perspective is the, the skeleton key, you know, the, the key that opens every door, okay, that opens all the locks that imprison our happiness. Um, what is this perspective shift, he says, that has the power? This healthy perspective, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, both talk about it, that allows them to greet life with much more joy in the face of the unbearable sorrow they've experienced, okay, which involves stepping back, okay, getting a broader picture of the situation. What happens is we're engaged in a very limited, self-absorbed perspective. What happened to me? You know, my morning, this invaded my space, this email. I don't understand why they couldn't just do it my way. My way is the best way, right? Which it's not. It's not. We can all learn from each other, okay? Which is, again, goes into the generosity of heart and mind. I can learn from people. You know, I'm letting them be generous like that. Amazing. So think about stepping back. There's people, we have expressions in the West. You get caught in the weeds, right? There's people we know, they, they're stuck in the weeds, but it's like this. And I've worked with people where they're, they can't, they're fixated on something that's not healthy. Fixated on something. When can you, spe when are you stuck? You know, and it could be, and I'm just using Kate as an example with her neighbor that she mentioned in the beginning. We get really stuck and glommed on to this is the way it's going to be. It's fixed this way. And the person's always like that. But if I could kind of step back and think, first of all, so shared humanity, many people have issues with their neighbors. You know, we have maybe a confused perspective between the two of us. So we're misunderstanding each other. Um, I, again, I'm back in my third or fourth major Buddhist community that I'm working with, a Buddhist center. And there's a lot of players. And a lot of the players have strong opinions and strong personalities. I don't mean bad, but we need kind of a strong group of leaders to do it. Now, you don't need too many leaders, but it's good that they have opinions about things because there's areas they're experts in that I know nothing about. I'm like, well, I want to hear about the septic issue. What did you find out? You're, you know about that. So they've delved into the whole thing and sorted, you know, sorted it out. Or So again, if I can less solidify, step back and get a bigger picture of many people are experiencing this. Many people have this thing. And what I'm noticing in these communities is it's all about communication. It's always about communication. And we miscommunicate so often. We miscommunicate so often because I'm concerned and I've got my self-awareness, I've got my limited perspective, all floating around my self-absorption and my self-interest. Right. And at any time that gets threatened, any time like that, I'm going to withdraw or lash out or whatever, but I'm not able to see that I might be miscommunicating. And what happens is my hearing shuts down. So it doesn't matter what you say. I, I ain't listening. I'm not present like that. Okay. So this is, again, that skeleton key. This will open all the locks of, well, this is really tough right now. I'm having a really hard time with this person a couple steps back. What's my role? What would help this situation? Neither of us is happy. Could I do something positive that may shift that? Can I let go expectation that they will change? Like, because Kate was saying, and this happens a lot, I did all this stuff for them. So we then might have an expectation. They should be kind. People are confused. Some people don't have any experience of kindness. Seriously. So they don't have that habit in their mind like that. So taking a step back. Now, here's one thing about perspective. We can take the step back. But here's the second thing I want to add. This is about moving in more closely, OK? When we have a problem with someone, we want to step back and alienate and go away. We want them to go away. We want them out of our picture, out of our lives. We hope the neighbor will move. We hope they'll be evicted or who knows. Right. There is an, an another tool of moving in closely to 
try to find what you have in common. What happens is as we stand further back and they are other, we create a solid other, not gaining perspective, but just alienation. When they become that other, I, I don't see anything positive in them. And there's nothing we have in common. Where if we move in, and even if the person has these negative traits, usually there's something you can find that you have in common. For one, you both want to be happy and you don't want to suffer. For two, you both have Buddha nature, a seed that can develop into a highly realized being. Number three, you both may suffer from delusion and imbalance in your mind and perspective. That's three things right there. So they're struggling too. What's their view of you? Perspective helps us have a look on that. So when we're focused, back to Jimpa, on the smaller detail, it lends to fear, it lends to hatred. You know, it lends to nitpicking those little negative things like that. And then here's another thing to, to work with. Go back in your life, just think for a moment of some of the negative things that have happened to you, some of the good that came from it. So with a wider perspective, we can see our situation, we can see those involved, okay, in a larger context, possibly from a more neutral position. Okay? And by seeing the many conditions, circumstances that have led to this event, okay, I can recognize, well, my mind's kind of limited. My story is not entirely accurate. It is my perspective, but it's not entirely accurate. Okay. So His Holiness would go on to say, you can even see your own role in the conflict or the misunderstanding. By stepping back, we can also see the longer, the long view, bigger picture, you know, and then have a clear understanding of how our actions, you know, how our problems fit into the larger frame of life like that. So even though we might see that our situation is challenging now, what do you think it's going to be like in a month? How will you view this situation in a month or a year from now? What a year ago was pervasively horrible for you going on in your life that now you, you're like, oh, that's nothing. What has happened a couple of years ago, maybe in your life that seemed insurmountable? So these are things I think we need to use over and over and continue to reflect in our minds like that. And then as we know, some of the scientists have said, and most of you are familiar with this, that in general, they have studied the people who frequently have a, a kind of more engagement in their minds of me, mine, I, what's in it for me, this is what happened to me, have a higher risk of heart attack, a higher risk of the heart attack being fatal, right? This self-involvement like that. And, and one of the scientists was saying it was a better predictor of death than smoking, than high cholesterol levels or high blood pressure. Can you imagine? And we know people like that and they're very caught up in stuff. It, it lends to, as you know, unhappiness. And the happiness contributes to negative health, like that. So with perspective, and because we are going around with a lot of people, I wanna come back to this word in the book, some of you are familiar with, have heard, the concept of, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, please correct me if I'm wrong, Ubuntu. Ubuntu, from South Africa, a person, is a person through other persons. Person is a person through other persons. So we're, a lot of us are isolated now to a degree. The pandemic has taken a toll of coming up on two years now, especially a toll on younger people, I've noticed, the number of younger people I talk with. And a person is a person through other persons. So here we've got this interesting thing on the planet right now. People have come to me, how do we create more friends? 
Okay. Trust. Trust is one way. Okay. Well, how do you develop more trust? Okay. Pretty simple. You show a genuine sense of concern for their well being. That's one way. You show a genuine sense of concern for their well being. Then trust can develop. But when we're not like that, and I'm very focused on myself, it can disturb other people. Well, I don't know if they're really going to be there for me. You know, she doesn't seem to think of anyone other than herself. So I don't know if that's safe. I don't know if that's a safe place like that. So think about, think about that with Ubuntu. And I want to go to an exercise here about this. Okay. Um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu mentions Ubuntu, speaks to the connection that exists between all people. And he describes it and defines it as this belief, the belief in a universal bond of sharing that connects all humanity. Okay, so again, he says a person is a person through other people. So think about the belief in a universal bond of sharing that connects all of humanity. Now we've got eight obstacles to joy that interfere with joy. And let me just give you the list. And I've mentioned many of these already, okay? We have the fear, stress, and anxiety camp. I think we're pretty familiar with that. Number two, frustration and anger. And we're gonna revisit these. Number three, sadness and grief. Number four, despair. We talked about some of these last week. Number five, loneliness. Even I, I'll call it alienation, fragmentation. Number six, envy and jealousy. Number seven, suffering and adversity. And number eight, illness and a fear of death. Illness and a fear of death. So I'm going to work right now. I want to look at fear, stress, and anxiety. In fact, what I'll do is take the first three, just working with those, which is number one, fear, stress, and anxiety. Number two, frustration and anger. Number three, sadness and grief. So I am going to put you into breakout groups. And we have... Um, I'm gonna make six groups of three. And here's what I want you to think about is you can choose which of those three you wanna work on. Fear, stress, and anxiety, you can talk about. You're gonna have 10 minutes. Frustration and anger or sadness and grief. If you're talking about fear, stress, and anxiety, look at what determines if you see someone or something as a threat. And I want you to keep in mind this Ubuntu. A person is a person through other people. Because a lot of our stress, okay, it's dependent on seeing ourselves as separate from others. Is that true? Discuss that. Okay. Which perhaps returns the loss of a sense of communal connection of that Ubuntu. Is that what's going on for you if you're experiencing fear, stress, and anxiety? And, and, what, and one of the things that the writer in the book was saying, asked the archbishop, how do you handle worry and insomnia? Because you know, remember I said rumination deals with the past. Worry, I'm not talking about concern. Concern's a little bit more positive. Worry, fear, anxiety is all about the future. What's going to happen? What will happen? Oh my gosh, this is going to happen. Causes insomnia. Because so many people I know right now are having trouble sleeping. They're awake, you know, like sometimes people say, I should have called you. You were up at two, I was up at two, right? So, but thinking about others and remembering that you're not alone, this was Archbishop Desmond Tutu's reply. When he thinks about others, when he remembers he's not alone in distress sometimes. Other people have these worries too, you know? And here's, here's the last part. This is the key again. He would say a prayer for them. 
You wake up in the middle of the night, you're concerned about something going on for yourself. What about other people going through the same thing? Why don't I focus on them and say a prayer for them? The essence of Tong Lin meditation, taking their suffering, letting it chip away at my, my selfishness and offering them peace of mind, rest, like that. So I'd like you, those of you in the group, you wanna talk about fear, stress, and anxiety, have a, have a look at that. When is that separating you? How would it work? What kind of tools, techniques can you use that will have you reaching for saying a prayer for them and thinking about the common humanity? If you're working with frustration and anger, and you can work with more if you get through one of them discussing, there'll be three of you discussing hopefully. Um, just think about this. If we have compassion for ourselves, and acknowledge that we might be afraid, we might be hurt, we might feel threatened, okay? But we, if we can have compassion for ourselves in that space, we can have compassion for others, possibly even those that create anger for us. So when we're able to recognize that the other person also has fears and hurts and suffers from confusion, that's their own fragile human perspective, just like ours. Then we have a chance of escaping, okay, from this normal reflex some people have of anger. So talk about that, and if that's one of your things, in relation to a person who's a person because of other persons, Ubuntu. What is the frustration and anger? Does it, how does it separate you? What could you do to break through that? Here's number three, sadness and grief. If you wanna look at sadness and grief, sadness in many ways, the emotion that causes us to reach out to one another in support and solidarity. Okay? And Archbishop Desmond Tutu goes on, he says, we don't really get close to others if our relationship is, he says, made up of unending hunky doriness. He goes, it's the hard times, the painful times, the sadness and the grief that knit us more closely together. So again, with common humanity, but held with a heart of loving, of loving kindness towards yourself first, which translates to others as well. And then using mindfulness, when can I sometimes just be with, the, with my own sadness and grief? So when someone else shows up with that, I can be there to hold theirs or to stand with them in theirs. When have I moved away from that and said, oh no, I can't, I don't wanna do this. You know, what prevented me? You know, is it me escaping from the discomfort of samsara? Well, I'm sorry, but that's how life on the planet is again. So am I facing reality? Am I touching reality? So you could explore that as well in creating my relationship with others. So we're looking for what prevents you, discuss that, what's gonna better help you move through these obstacles to joy, okay? And I am going to put you into groups for 10 minutes. Thank you so much for your participation. Okay, please be patient. Oh, it's not letting me um, assign a second room. Okay, so let me go back. Try this again. I'm only getting one room. It went so well last week. Let's see if I can.
Okay, well, this room has 34 seconds to close. I, I can't get out of them, so sorry. I don't know what I did. It worked really well last week. Is there a way to end the rooms more quickly? Anybody have any ideas? Let's see. Okay, 10 seconds, and then I'll see if I can do this again. Okay, here we go. Amy, I think you only set it for one minute instead of 10 minutes. Okay. I don't know how to do the time, so. Let's see if I can just get the rest of the folks in. At the, at the where it says at the bottom, add room, you can add, um, I think you said six. That's what I'm doing. I've just got the last room right now. Uh-huh, right. Okay. Now, I'm not sure how to do the time. So I'm going to open the rooms. Okay, there they go. Enjoy. Okay, so here we are, my dear. I, okay. I hope we, what I'll do, 513, I'm going to give them a message midway through, and let me just copy a couple things for them. Okay. While I'm doing this, because I've got all the things right here. So I set the timer for nine minutes, so they'll have, yeah, it'll go off and we'll know. Yeah. All right. Okay, let me send this. I'm going to send a message. Oh, it just deleted it. All right. I don't know how to do the message. So let me, I thought I could just copy and paste. Doesn't seem to um, I, 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 something that just popped up on my, on my screen from Amy Miller to everyone in the chat. What, oh. Number one, fear, stress. What is second? Okay, I didn't finish it. So, yeah. Let me just write it here and then I'll. Oh, sorry, it's not working. All right, it's just sending the wrong messages. Out. Anyway, I'll just stop the messages. So, oh, okay, you don't I want um, to work this better, but yeah, yeah. At I the bottom, I'm send okay. a few messages there, and uh, okay. At anyway. the bottom of venerable at the bottom of the of the screen of the breakout room screen, it says broadcast message to all. Is that what you were doing? That's what I was doing, but it doesn't like when you try to back up, it just sends the message. It doesn't, and it doesn't let you copy and paste the, like I, I thought see. I could just copy in there, but it's not. Right. Me the, let me just see if I can give them the last. Okay. See, anytime you return, it just goes to the next uh, thing. Let's see, frustration, anger. Here. All right, I'll just leave it like that. Okay. So what do you think of those three things, Sunny? I was just wondering. Um I if think you want to pick one of them that is really floating around for you. Um, well, you know, um, I can identify with um what's what's her name, Catherine? Kate. Hey, yeah, because um, I have a neighbor 
uh, you know, I live in an apartment. My bedroom is up against his living room. Mm. <laughs> so that makes, and he just moved in. Like um, he and his partner moved in like uh, four or five months ago. So that makes some interesting um, karmic experiences. I could just feel, the, you know, the bile arising, even though, you know, I, are they no like, are they noisy? Is that the issue? They're noisy. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. I've got it pretty much down pat. They from from eight o'clock to about eleven, sometimes more. They that's their living room, so I'm not going to hold it against them. But especially one guy who has a very loud voice. The other guy I never hear. What can I say? I, I you know. Now, what was the previous neighbor like? Quiet as a mouse. Was it just, one, one person living there? Yes. So yes. that's going to create, when there's one person, they're not talking to somebody unless they're talking to themselves, right? <laughs> yep, that's, yep, yep. That's right. So, you know, it's like, I can understand per perfectly what, what Kate is feeling. I like what Sheila said, which is that when she goes to the store, she'll pick up something for her neighbor. I think that's wonderful. And, and so I may, you know, just... I don't want to be obvious about it you know like but you know what i would suggest that could work this happened to me with a neighbor next to me and when i was in dc and our yeah. bedrooms were back to back yeah so and you could hear through the walls um is if you create a healthy relationship with them meaning did you get them any little gift welcoming them to the building you, you um, know it'd be something yeah. small but just like oh right. hey your new neighbors like i can tell you about the neighborhood or I'll tell you right. where there's a really good place to get this or that or laundry or whatever can really help people new moving into a building. Some, some people resonate, but you start, right. maybe you see them in the hallway and, and slowly give it time, but mm -hmm. over time, because it's a positive relationship, eventually yeah. one day you can joke around like, you know, oh, by the way, what was going on last night? Were you guys like, I actually... I, I'm sorry, but I overheard and I have that recipe for that thing that you want to like, they'll be able, once they know you can hear, then they'll be more conscious of it. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 right. So without one of the saying things anything. that happened with yeah. my neighbor, who was very warm guy, and we're still very close friends, actually, um, is because he heard and I was having a very kind of torturous relationship with someone in my little apartment and, or I, actually it was one night I got a really bad um, cold and I had a terrible cough. So he, one day I opened my door to go to work and there's a bottle of cough medicine. Oh, wow. And, later, and I didn't know him that well, but then I realized, and then I saw him and I said, oh, can you hear me through the wall? And he's like, yes, I can. And I realized, so then I was much more sensitive to the noise I was making over there because I realized how mm. it went through the walls and, yeah, so that's I think wonderful. Really, but it has to start with a positive thing where then they're very receptive to you and say, oh, yeah, you know, hi, I'm yeah. Sunny, I live here. And because you've lived in the building a while, right? Yeah, yeah, 40 years. 40 Over years. 40. Oh my God, New yeah. Yorkers are amazing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. And so the previous tenant was, was there before I was. So, well, wow. he was always, you know, Sharon was always quiet and. And so, why, did they, so, why did they move out? I'm curious. Sharon, Sharon passed away. Oh. It was like um, she was in her apartment. And, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, I heard some commotion. And um, there were the, the police taking, you know, and removing her from the apartment. That's what oh. it was. Wait, let me just yeah. tell them there's three minutes left. I yeah. Think. Venerable, how was your friend from Israel? So right now he is still alive. Venerable, you frozen. Kinds of they the surgeons, the doctors are saying, I guess if there's recovery, it will be a very long haul for him to recover from this kind of brain bleed but I, I you know you never know how much they know and what the damage and people's karma and but apparently it, it, it looked at one point like he was just going to pass away really quickly but that hasn't happened I think there's been a lot of prayers wow. you know and um so 
it, right now there is some activity. I don't know if he's responsive. You know, I wouldn't say he's responsive, but there's apparently some opening of the eyes, some, so it's amazing mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's in Israel right now? He's in Israel. He's Israeli, okay. Israeli monk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's so yeah. sad about your Thank name. You. I'm so Thank sorry. you. Sorry, that can be very alarming. It's disturbing. Yeah. 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 I had a long relationship with Sharon. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But, but, um, how old was she, roughly? She was younger than me. So she was um, probably, I'm 69. She was probably mm -hmm. 10 years younger. Any idea what she died from? She had had an operation like six months before, or not that, but she'd been continuously having problems since the operation. And um, yeah, so, so apparently what happened was that she had um, gone, she had taken some takeout at one night after work, she went home to eat it. And all of a sudden she was started a lot of blood and, and something, you know, caught the, Maybe the operation came undone, whatever oh, they had right. done, you know? Right. And um, yeah, I just hope she, you know, didn't suffer too much, you know, too much pain, but. Sorry. You know, <laughs> okay, I am closing. They have 60 seconds. Okay, yeah. I know, yeah. It's really, I mean, I'm sure your landlord is like, oh great, I can quadruple the rent now, you know, like, oh. oh yeah. Yeah, that, that, in fact, they, she had an L-shaped studio. They turned it into a one bedroom. So, you know. Yeah, as it goes. Welcome back. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sunny. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Slowly, slowly, people coming back. I couldn't decide who was in the groups last week. So some people may have ended up in the same groups with the same people. I tried to change it up. We thought we thought you were keeping us Floridians together, huh, Peggy? No. <laughs> oh, that's right. You you were together. The two of you were together last week. I remember that. Yeah. I'll have to change that next time. Well, it's okay. I'm getting used to Peggy. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Please, any insights, any things, what did you learn from the little interaction, the 10 minutes? Anything you learned? Please, Mary. Well, one thing that I, you know, a new perspective that I didn't really have is that when people are angry with you or frustrated with you or, you know, whatever, um, not only is it causing you to feel stressed, but they're feeling stressed too. So, you know, they're acting out of their own stressed place. And, you know, and somebody, somebody pointed that out in the group and I had never really thought about it that way. Like I always thought about it, of, thought about it as here's this person being mean, you know, and they're in control and they know what they're doing and, you know, and, you know, they're, they're like landing the hits. But then I thought, you, you know, but then the idea that they're just as stressed out as you are, or maybe more, you know, kind of, it helped me like open up my mind a little bit. So true. It's so true. And there's a meditation some of you have done with me, <clears throat> excuse me, of how to deal with a difficult person. We all have these difficult, challenging people in our lives. And, and you get to a point where um, you are across from them. This is a little bit related to exchanging self with others where I ask you to kind of change perspective as if you're looking out through their eyes back at you in the negative interaction, you know? And it's, it's really different because, you know, people are, <clears throat> Sunny, maybe you can put that up later at the end, if that's okay, because I think it's distracting a little bit. Um, so if, and what happens when you look out and you realize like looking back at you angry it's a lot like we never think we're just kind of like, you know, this doesn't work for me, but they're just as stressed. They're just as kind of like, oh my God, this person's scaring me or this person's really disturbing me. And yeah, I think that's really interesting, Mary. Thank you. What else? Other comments? Which ones I'm curious what top, I'm sorry, I was trying to do the messages to you, but it, I was trying to, I thought I could cut and paste, but it wouldn't let me. And I kept sending the wrong messages. Which ones did you tackle? I'm curious. Did everybody do the same one or? 
we looked at um we looked at the uh, grief grief and sadness grief and sadness and yeah. um we all felt that um our practices is was really the only thing that really saves us because it's such a heartfelt whether it's an addiction or death or that the tonglin and the meta practices and to give loving kindness to ourselves and letting go and not only shared humanity but shared karma and and a real chance to purify in the grief itself and the suffering that you go through but we all f f kind of agreed that um our practices is for this is yeah. what can help us to get through because it's such a Thank heart you. felt thing yeah no absolutely i think more and more we turn to the practice when we can develop a rich consistent practice right like if it's not there it's always hard to get started and to say and there's so much practice what do i do please start slowly and get the right instructions we have wonderful intro beginning level courses intermediate courses advanced courses to get the right footing slowly you will make a difference many of you can look back one year three years five years ten years and and that is sustaining you and your mind has changed and i've known many of you for years some of you for years now and it's it's impressive the work you're doing so i think that's the best thing to to create and also again when you know creating connection with others healthy connection with others transforming whatever those negative tendencies are with someone else to continue to reach out this friend this morning that we're doing this work together you know suddenly there was alienation for me and a wall kind of went up of like what don't you trust me don't you i know we have the same intention and so again i could have withdrawn and kind of folded in and made more stories in my mind but again kind of coming back and going wait a minute you know what would rinpoche do i went like continue to show up and and then reaching out and reaching across and now we're connected we're you know we've always been connected it's just the negativity the delusion in our minds disconnects us so keep reaching out keep trying to find a positive way to reach out i think we have to it's kind of our purpose for being again that ubuntu think about it like what am i going to be without these other people what can i contribute to these other people positively that makes the world go around a little more harmoniously. So I realize we're out of time. I kept thinking we finish at nine, but it finishes at 8.30. Ah, okay. So what I'd like you to do is again, those exercises of reframing, looking at perspective, um, reaching for gratitude as much as you can, which I know many of you do, finding generosity of heart and mind, kindness, choosing kindness, I'd like you to experiment this week with those experiences, those experiences, you know, and looking and, and can you bring in Ubuntu? Can you bring in that, that term over and over of what happens when I, like, I feel disconnected now. So how do I feel? Well, not very happy. What, what would help me connect? What's a positive way to connect? And again, some of you already said this, and this is the key again, what's their experience? It's not just about me. What's the other person's experience? That's what's going to create so much joy in your mind, in your life, in your daily activities. What is somebody else's experience? And how about the next level? Can I say a little prayer for them? Can I say a little prayer for them? You know, you wake up in the middle of the night. What can I say a prayer for these other people? I'm worried about this person. Can I say a prayer for this person? You know, rather than just me, me, me. Possible? Let's try, let's try. So any, any last questions, comments, confusion right now? Anything you wanna ask before we close? And Kate, I wanna hear about, you know, wanna explore your gift, picking on you. Okay, let me share my screen. And to do some dedication prayers. And thank you. It looks like um, Sunny has shared some things about the next meeting and things like that. And and uh, and Sunny, sometimes it's helpful if you want at the end, you can just say in the chat because some people forget to look in the chat, so you can see recordings, stuff like that, and the recommended course. Thank you so much for hosting. It's wonderful. I want to I want to do some dedication prayers, and there's a lot of people right now to dedicate 
to um, Ross, Harry, Venerable Punsok in Israel is still alive. Sheila asked me, uh, sorry, Sonny asked me at the break. Um, he is apparently opening his eyes a little bit. Um, I'm sure the power of our prayers, um, breathing on his own, but it, it's not clear about a recovery, like what kind of recovery the doctors aren't that optimistic, but they're, anything's possible. Anything's possible, I believe that. So there's many people too, and many people in your own lives that need additional help right now. So if you'd like to join me in these dedication prayers, thank you. And let me know if you can't see the screen. Here we go. Can everybody see that? Can you enlarge it, Venerable? Yes, I'm going to do that in a second, just as long as you can see it. Great. So for all of these beings, let's take whatever positive energy we've created right now, the benefit, the merit, and invest it in all these beings around the planet that need additional healing and help to not only find more joy in their lives, but to find their way to a path that can help them reach an ultimately happy state to benefit all, as well as our own practices as well. However many sick sentient beings there are, may they quickly be freed from all sicknesses, may all the sicknesses without exception of transmigratory beings never occur again. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent dharma. By completing the qualities of the grounds and paths, may I quickly attain the state of Vajradhara. And we're gonna to go to this very key one, Rimshi says, very important dedication with emptiness, considering emptiness. Due to all the past, present, and future merits collected by me, the numberless Buddhas, the numberless sentient beings, which are completely empty of existing from their own side, may I, who am completely empty of existing from my own side, achieve the state of full enlightenment, which is completely empty of existing from its own side, and lead all sentient beings who are completely empty of existing from their own side to that state, which is completely empty of existing from its own side by myself alone, who am completely empty of existing from my own side. I fully dedicate all these virtues to be able to train just like the hero Manjushri who knows reality and just like Samantabhadra as well. And for the long lives of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Lama Zoba Rinpoche, the wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, to the incomparably kind Tenzin Gyatso I beseech, May all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. For the long life of Lama Zopa Rinpoche, you who uphold the subduer's moral way, who serve as the bountiful bearer of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading Manjunath's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplish magnificent prayers honoring the three sublime ones, savior of myself and others, your disciples, please, please live long. I would also like to dedicate to Alea Riddell um, for a quick, a swift, perfect rebirth to get enlightened to benefit all. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next week and may your week be as joyful as possible and please take care of yourself. Lovely to see all of you.